I think everybody has their own personal way of doing pretty much anything online, whether it's print and demand, selling printables, running every type of business. But this video is simply what I do. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Maya Loy and I teach creative people how to sell their art online. And today's video is all about my print on demand tools, whether they're online, offline, physical objects, apps that I'm using, apps that I paid for, basically every single thing that I'm using from my print on demand. There are so many tools that you can use for print on demand. So many people use different things. Whether you're taking photographs of beautiful places and using a really nice camera, or you're even taking photographs of a physical abstract painting you created for print on demand. Whether you're using Photoshop, Illustrator, you're using Affinity Designer to make your designs as well as maybe to make mock-ups, or if you're using a variety of online databases and free picture stocks, free clip art stocks, there are really so many tools that you could be using to design, upload, and promote your print on demand. But as I said before, this is a list of what I'm using, and I would also love it if you would share the list of the tools that you're using with me down below in the comment section. Maybe we have some overlapping tools, who knows? I would like to start with the technology that I'm using. So I have my Wacom tablet, which is the Wacom Intuos. It doesn't have a screen, so I basically draw on it while it is connected to a different screen, in that case, my computer. I also have my iPad, I think it's iPad 7. I'm not even sure, I just got it very recently through Amazon, along with my Apple Pencil, and I love it. You're so cute and shiny. I'm using my phone a lot, and I would love to show it to you, but I'm also using it to film this video, which is the iPhone 12 mini, and my little M1, which I adore. Now, with these tools, I'm using apps and websites to basically create my designs, to create mockups, and to do a lot of other things that don't relate just to my print on demand. For example, the first tool that I'm using and possibly the biggest tool that I'm using that I think most of you will be using as well is Canva. I am currently using Canva to do designs for my Tee Public store and I've used Canva to do designs for my Redbubble store and my Society store in the last few years. I'm also using Canva to make patterns if I don't want to use Clip Studio Paint, which I'll be talking about soon. And I'm using Canva a lot to make promotional stuff like Instagram banners for print on demand, as well as Pinterest pins. I'm using Canva so much, it's ridiculous, especially since they also added the option to actually have mockups from Canva. They don't have this huge mockup library yet, and they don't include a million products to mockup like other mockup websites, but they do have enough mockups to get you by. Canva also has a print on demand service, which I ordered from a couple of weeks ago, and I have packages waiting for me back in Bansco to check them out and show them to you guys. So that's possibly another way Canva could be used as a print on demand tool as the actual supplier. When I was selling print on demand on Etsy, as well as when I started selling some digital download art on Etsy, I'm using Canva to create my listing photos and pretty much using Canva for everything including to create the YouTube banners for these videos, like the thumbnails for the videos. And well, half of my, I think there hasn't been one day, one day in the past, I don't know, three years that I have not used Canva. The second tool that I'm using quite a lot is Placeit. Placeit is a huge world for mockups, which is what I'm usually doing with it. You can create insanely good mockups, including video mockups, really, really easy and really fast. You can also design everything you want for social media and you can actually use Placeit to actually, you know, design your entire things. I mostly prefer designing using Canva and then using Placeit for the mockups. However, I might explore more using Placeit for my designs or I might explore more trying to use more Canva for my mockups. I need to decide. But for now, I am keeping Placeit because I really love the quality of their mockups and they keep on adding more and more unique mockups to their mix, and they're just really fun to use. There's actually a full tutorial on Placeit. I will leave a link to that down below. My third tool that I use quite a lot is Clip Studio Paint, or sometimes as we refer to it in the comment section as CSP. Clip Studio Paint is a software that I got for free when I purchased my Wacom tablet. It costs money, I have no idea how much. You can go ahead and check out how much it costs. And for me, it mostly replaces Photoshop because I really don't like Photoshop. I found that 
Clip Studio Paint gives me everything I need from Photoshop and it's a lot more clear to me how to do certain things. There are far less tutorials about Clip Studio Paint than Photoshop Online, but I did manage to actually learn how to do some cool stuff with Clip Studio Paint by watching Photoshop tutorials because they're, they are very much built in the same way. There is a lot of similar options and it's just a program that I really love. One of my biggest uses for Clip Studio Paint lately is the fact that I can make huge designs like, you know, 20,000 by 20,000 pixels, 16,000 by 17,000 pixels that are patterns of abstract designs that I make using Canva or my iPad. Now, for those of you who requested a tutorial on how I make quick patterns using Clip Studio Paint, there are several methods to do it with Clip Studio Paint and it's really, really cool. There is going to be a tutorial about that in the channel in, well, two days on the 5th of January. Tomorrow I am leaving Svetivlas finally to get back to Bansko so I'll be on the road most of the day and the day after that you can expect a Clip Studio Paint Patterns tutorial and I just can't wait. There are so many other things that I do with Clip Studio Paint if I need to draw something over something. For example, if I made this really cool coloring page and I want to scan it and I want to actually create it digitally, I do that with Clip Studio Paint. I also used to remove background using Clip Studio Paint until Canva started doing that with their AI. One more point for Canva, I guess, right? The facts are that Canva now has the draw feature, which I don't use that much with Clip Studio Paint anymore because it is kind of good with Canva, but I do have Clip Studio Paint for free, so it does stay with me, especially because, again, I can create really, really large files. This is the biggest help that I get from Clip Studio Paint, just creating huge files, which really go well with my Society6 designs. By the way, there is also a full Society6 tutorial coming up, mentioning all of their different sizes for pretty much everything you'd want to upload and showing how you can do that with Clip Studio Paint. There is one more thing that I kind of like doing with Clip Studio Paint that I do it with a combination from Canva. So for example, I could take uh, a piece of graphics from Canva, like this piece of this puzzle, and then I create a pattern on Canva, like this one, and then I use Clip Studio Paint to basically mask them together to create this t-shirt. So I do love the combination of using these, you know, several programs to do what you want to do. I think that the more design softwares you have, the more you can incorporate, you know, the different things that you want to accomplish with each and every one of them. It just becomes fun. So I do that a lot for masking as well as for masking text. Even though you do have sort of a masking text option with Canva, please let me know if you'd like me to make a tutorial about that in the next few weeks. As I'm stepping away from things that I pretty much do on my computer, I'm moving back to my iPad. And with my iPad, there are two very specific softwares that I'm using most of the time, two very specific apps which are Procreate and iPhone Maker. I'm using Procreate to do my liquid art designs that I adore, again, with combination with Clip Studio Paint because I cannot make a file so big on Procreate by itself, but I can make it using Clip Studio Paint into a pattern for Society6. I can also make different mandalas using Procreate and I love their abstract designs, usually with the kaleidoscope effect and I think you've seen it when you've seen my art of wear scarf. I love making digital paper packs with them and I also like to draw my own clip art. I find that it's kind of nice mostly if I'm just you know huddled into this like corner of the room I don't want to reach for my computer I just want to watch something and then you know just sort of play around with procreate creating different doodles and just having fun. As I said before, I'm also using iFont Maker to create my own fonts because, you know, that's the best commercial use font you could ever have, a font that you made yourself. And there was actually a video in this channel about how I make my own fonts. I'm still working on my commercial use fonts for you guys. I think I have around 12 right now. I'm working on like making maybe like a bundle for them and I will be uploading them onto my Payhip store. Not my Etsy store, my Payhip store. And of course, we'll keep you guys updated about that. There are obviously a lot of other things that I do with my iPad, including mostly playing Jigsaw Planet, their app, and playing Tetris. I'm addicted to Tetris. So there are other things that I'm doing with my iPad and some TikTok. I think I downloaded TikTok just in my iPad because I think that if I have it on my phone, I'll just won't do anything ever. So it's just on my iPad. I'm just browsing through trying to figure out the maze that is TikTok marketing. It's just insane. Next up, we have my phone, which you might think I'm not using for print on demand because I'm just, you know, using it to record videos. 
But I do use my phone to photograph a lot of the designs that I upload and starting to upload to Fine Art America as well as Zazzle. If you're thinking to yourself, when did she start doing Zazzle? Well, you might go back and watch a video that I did a few days ago about my print on demand goals for 2022, basically what I'm doing for 2022 because Zazzle is definitely in the mix. And I'm doing it with photos that I took for my iPhone, the iPhone 12 mini. The camera is amazing. You have so many things that you can actually do with, you know, portrait mode and different stuff. This photo of this cat was actually taken like that. There was no editing after that. This is the actual camera. It's brilliant. But when I do wanna edit things on my phone, I usually use an app called Snapseed. And Snapseed is brilliant. I mean, come on. There are so many things that you can do with Snapseed that are just super awesome. You can pretty much edit photos in so many different ways while still maintaining the pixel size and the resolution of the original photo. You can edit the colors, the saturation, add effects, add dramatic effects to the sides of the photo from the inside. But not only photo editing is what I do with Snapseed, but you can also actually create all of your marketing materials for Instagram or Facebook directly from your Snapseed. Like for example, taking a photo of one of your items and then adding things like a sale to them or describing the item, adding frames to it and making it just, you know, ready for promoting on Instagram. Last but not least, I didn't know if to include this tool or this service in my list because I don't think that a lot of people either might not see it as a tool to be used for print on demand or as, you know, a tool at all. But the biggest, I think, tool for my marketing is actually WordPress. So WordPress is a website building technology that allows you to instantly build websites without actually knowing how to code. I would like to say it's similar to Wix and Magento and Squarespace, but WordPress is one step above them in so many things that you can do with WordPress. It's an open source code. There are so many plugins and themes that you can use and I'm using Hostinger to host my websites and purchase my domains. By the way, if you like this video or found this content useful, please hit that like button down below because every time you do, it really does help my channel. And subscribe to my channel if you are not yet subscribed. I am four days shy from being one year on YouTube. And I think that, I don't think I'll reach 10,000 subscribers in the next four days but it's definitely my next goal and I'm super, super excited. I can't believe that like almost 10,000 people have subscribed to listening to me talk. That's just insane. And there will be a video about that, of course, on the 7th of January. There's a lot of videos coming up this month. Oh my God, I'm gonna be so tired, so tired, but it's so worth it. And just to conclude, I'm using the MacBook Air M1. I'm using the iPhone 12 mini, the iPad 7. I'm also using my Wacom Intuos tablet, which is very old. And with all of them, I'm using Canva, Procreate, iPhone Maker, Snapseed app, Placeit. Did I forget something? Clip Studio Paint, WordPress, and of course the Tetris. That's the most important app on my iPad and my phone, and the computer, the Tetris. I think that without the Tetris and the jigsaw puzzles online, I would have lost my sanity a long time ago and would have never continued doing print on demand. So <laughs> that was my list for today. I hope that you enjoyed it. I would love to hear what kind of tools you're using. I've tested so many other tools. I mean, I was looking into Vexels for trying to use some of their clip art to configured it in mine. I was looking into Inkscape. I even maybe thought about Affinity Designer. And I would love to hear what tools you guys are using, what tools you recommend. And of course, I would love to try them out. There is also one tool that was not mentioned in this video because it's not really a tool. It's more like a database of designs, which is Creative Fabrica. Creative Fabrica is a huge, huge, huge marketplace for fonts, for graphics, for embroidery patterns, for so many different things, for crafters, as well as print-on-demand sellers and people who like to sell pretty much anything online. Their fonts for commercial purposes are amazing for print-on-demand, and they also have a lot of graphics that are allowed for print-on-demand use, whether you're altering the designs, adding to them, or using them as is. The full subscription for the print-on-demand usage for Creative Fabrica is $29 a month, but there is a 30% discount for people who apply from this channel. There is a link down below to a landing page welcoming the May tribe. 
people. I was so happy when I saw that for the first time they did it. It's almost a year ago. I still can't believe it. Um, but you get a 30% lifetime discount from one click. And as long as you have your membership running, you can use everything for commercial purposes, which is kind of cool. I mean, you can pretty much download 100 or 200 made designs a month for $20. You can download 10 different types of fonts. You can download something not used yet. You can check out so many different patterns, clip art, and made designs that they have. It's just a brilliant, brilliant tool. I don't know if I'm using it that much because most of my art these days is surrounding my iPad doing the liquid designs and my photography, but I am using several of their clip art and their fonts, of course, to combine within my T Public store and my niched designs. And with that being said, that was it from me for today. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in two days from Banska, Bulgaria, with how to make patterns using Clip Studio Paint. Till then, have an amazing beginning to this week and 2022. Bye!